Now, the boys, what's going on? This is Yorkie here, and welcome to season number four now of this Blackburn Rovers career mode. And we have a very important transfer window coming up after finishing mid table last season. And I think that's a good result for us. Mid table was a very good finish considering it was our first year in the Premiership. But we have a big player leaving. We've got Travis leaving the club. So we need to make some major decisions now. We need to bring in some players to strengthen. I would like to slowly start to push for Europe now. And one of the harder things, I reckon, in this initial transfer window is actually keeping hold of some of our better players and making some difficult decisions to let certain players leave in order to enhance our budget now we have a lot of youth players that are going to be moving on mainly on loans we have a transfer budget of 71 million so we're looking pretty good in the transfer stakes that's a decent budget here for a second season team in the premiership and i've gone and listed a whole host of players most of these loans but you'll see a few of them are transferred some of the academy boys but academy boys that i just don't think you're going to make it. We do have one major headache at this current moment in time. And that, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to be at left midfield. I didn't expect to have this many great players. We've got Reese Nelson, who's the highest rated, but has had injury issues. Several injuries now since being at Blackburn, and it has caused us a problem. Cowell has been very good. He stepped up when we didn't have Nelson. Can still play up top and right mid. Could be retrained elsewhere. But we have three academy players coming back from loans that look extremely good. We've got Kai Gregory coming back at 75 rated, 9. Billy Bennett coming back at 1976 rated. So that's two great Englishmen right there, both showing statuses that is great potential or an exciting prospect. That means they're going to have really good potential. And then Xavier Bravo, 75 19. Similar situation for all three of them. Now Gregory potentially could play on the right hand side of the park. That is an option. And I can still loan at least one of these out, but I don't see a reason why we'd loan all three of these out. Billy Bennett has now got important as a squad role so he was probably the one that we want to keep the most play him alongside cowell maybe or nelson i don't know there's a lot of decisions i'm going to split this transfer window at least into two videos so you guys can get your input with this being the longer term series and more of the long form content on the channel i want you guys to get your say in we also have a similar situation in midfield we're going to have to make some decisions i am going to list alfred duncan i really enjoyed him last year but we got the year we needed out of him and now kind of established i guess you could say in the premiership and we're going to let him leave My Mads Bidstrup comes back, 75 rated. Scott, 76 rated, but I think I'm probably just going to play him as a cam, a backup cam for the future seasons. We've got these two lads here. They're going to be loaned out or sold. So that, of course, is the main man, but we've lost Travis now, and he was our CDM player. CM and a CDM, and we don't currently have a CDM right now, although Bidstrup would probably fit that position more than anyone. But 75 rated, maybe not the man you want to take you forward. Jason Knight as well has stopped progressing. 76 rated overall. There's so many questions. You guys have offered so many suggestions. We're scouting them as we speak. And we're going to start to put this team together for our second season in the Premiership. Now, if you're new around there and you're out already, please smash that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. And let's get on with this episode. We're going to kick off the episode, I imagine, with just a load of information that we need to deal with but the big one is that travis has just joined barcelona and when we look at the transfer hub i don't think at this point anymore that we're looking at players that are going to slowly progress as i think now we're looking at players that are going to have a huge impact in the starting 11 as quickly as possible and that means we probably will be going for some bigger names now that we've hit that point because they need to just take us to the next level here and i am not one to turn my nose up when i find a couple of free transfers that have great experience and especially when one of them is very comfortable as a CDN. I'm looking at Saul as well. Who knows? He could still have a good impact at 30. I don't actually think he'll go down that much in rating. Would be very established. And in the center of the pack at the minute, we do have players that are going to grow, but we are also the weakest in that position. And Jordan Henderson, after being released, would be the perfect fit for this Blackburn team. Might even walk in as captain. We are going to do a vote on the next episode to determine who our captain will be. And if we can get this deal done, I think it will be between Jordan Henderson, Turner in net, and Reggie Cannon. I think they're the three players that make the most sense. You might say Jordan Henderson shouldn't walk into the club and become the captain. That's absolutely fine to say. But someone who's 35, his experience, Champions League winner, played in a World Cup. It's hard to look beyond that. But we're going to go in and offer him a contract right now. This, to me, is somewhat kind of a marquee sign-in for a Blackburn Rovers because... It's showing we're established in the Premiership now. He's going to help out in the background with some of the young players we've got. We've got a lot of young central midfielders and just young players in general that Jordan Henderson can hopefully help out with. But he is going to have to take a pay cut. I'm hoping that 44,000 44, a week and maybe a, a few hundred grand 
will hopefully convince him. He's getting on a bit. We'll give him the bonuses. Man, if Jordan Henderson scores 10 goals, more than happy. I think in the grand scheme of things for a free agent, this is a massive deal to kick off the window. We've got big transfer offer for Turner then straight off the bat. As we start to move forward a little bit, I want to kind of see what happens with players leaving the club before we go too crazy in the transfer window. Matt Turner has been unbelievable for us, although Jamal Lewis is a player I like. Newcastle actually finished below us. We're going to reject it. I'm expecting a lot of transfers coming in for some of our bigger players. We won't be able to hold on to them all, I'm sure of that. And just as I speak, it happens. It's Napoli for Tyrese Dolan. Now, do I think Napoli is the right place for Tyrese Dolan? No. But Napoli is a massive club, so you have to open yourself up to these conversations. We're seeing English players go more and more abroad. It's Champions League football. Let's negotiate. Do I want to lose Tyrese Dolan? Absolutely not, but... Hey, these are tough decisions we have to make, and I want to keep this career mode the most realistic I can on the channel. So of course, English tax and the fact that Dolan is a prized possession to us, we're going to go 40 million straight out there, see if Napoli will pay it. We're going to go 29.2. Again, and we've got him under contract for another three years, I think. I'm not going to be reckless with some of the negotiations, but I still want the right fee. So 35 million for me would be acceptable. Look, there we go. 35 million. I can't believe we're going to lose Tyrese Doland. But 35 million and he gets to play Champions League football. We've had him for three seasons. It seems only fair. We're also going to have a rule as well. If we let Tyrese Dolan go, who's one of our better players, we then wouldn't let Ahmad Diallo go as well in the same window. That's just not something a club would do. He then might go the window after that. But there's no way that we let Dolan go and Diallo go in the same window because they're our star right midfielders. And as it stands, we don't actually have that many options for right mid. I'm going to re-scout Somerville again. But I'm not blessed with options there. We've probably got more right wingers which most of these we could probably convert down to playing right mid brennan johnson is really someone i want to use exciting player but i actually think he's probably a striker which then leaves me to luca romero who i really like as well so there are options here in this window a lot of people though want to see me sign a dama triore let's see if they can negotiate that contract first though before we start worrying about that and of course we've got such an abundance of players if we go on the team sheet let's see how many can play right have a mad diallo of course will then be the consistent lockdown starter, and then we have andreason who's coming through and he's improving he's a young prospect we also have little there as well and gregory can play on the right so maybe we don't don't even make the choice to sign a new right mid because we've got these options already so when it comes to team sheets although i've not set this one up we have now added in uh, a 442 it's quite an offensive one uh, but at the minute, we need another striker. And this is really what we've got at the minute. We've got Grant and Jens Dahl. And then we've got Knudsen on the bench. So it, we're not blessed there if we do play 4-4-2. I do think we need this option for when we play against sides with three at the back. Because I can't break them down. Now, Cowell could also play up top in that formation so that is an option now i intend to send the youth scouts out again this year so suggestions from you guys of course is always important to me i have no idea where we're going to send them yet so feel free to suggest wherever you want we're a premiership side now so we probably have a much bigger scope on where we can go and scout so get suggestions down below but the big moment we've been waiting for and that is mr jordan henderson walking himself into the blackburn rovers club i am so excited to see jordan henderson in the strip and just to play with him because i don't think i've actually ever used jordan henderson i've never managed liverpool on a save and i don't think then i've ever signed jordan henderson so this is this is pretty big to me this is gonna be good fun also the news is confirmed tyrese doland leaves the club i'm not gonna be too reckless with making decisions on a new right midfielder we're gonna get an a for that of course because we got really good money for tyrese doland this was probably always an outcome that was gonna happen but we do have players who could play right mid we're still a super young squad if i'm being honest so we have a transfer coming in from rico lewis i understand lads it's atletico madrid but he's just signed for the club i know he was here on loan all last season but he's actually just signed for the club so he he's not going anywhere this window couple more transfers coming in for players uh colwell no chance not to Villarreal anyway and not for 25 million but we are going to let will go just raise a little bit more money into the kitty and i mean he was never going to get near the starting 11 when it comes to objectives this season no youth development objective which is really weird it's high as well but there isn't one and for the brand exposure medium get 10 games with at least one goal scored in home matches this season we should do that we're a high scoring team and sign one crucial first team player assigned to a forward position i mean we're talking about getting another striker so that definitely could happen that will also count for right wings as well continental none of course domestic premier league finishing the europa league spot 
definitely not going to happen, but we are going to try and push for Conference League. Who knows what happens? FA Cup 16 will do that. And the long term is to make a profit from a youth player, which is actually interesting because although we're already going to do that with Wilk, we're already going to beat that. We've got a big bid for Billy Bennett. That was a mouthful. It's Espanyol. We are going to say no. He's going nowhere. He's the project for the future. We are starting to become blessed with our academy players. And I think he's going to get some game time this season. We need to figure out what we want to do with Reese Nelson because him being injury prone so much, although I've really enjoyed using him, is costing us. So maybe it's time for these youngsters to get the games that they deserve. As mentioned before, we've already talked about this. Tyrese Dolan has left the club. We're sad about it. There's no way Matt Diallo goes. We just, we've already talked about it. it. Wouldn't be realistic to let him go. But we do have transfer bids in for Adrian and Duncan. We're going to accept both of them. It didn't take too long for some transfer offers to come in for Reese Nelson. We've had them every single window so far since we started this career mode. But I do actually want your guys' feedback before we let him go. I will transfer list him as soon as I get that feedback. But we need to know. We need to know what you think we should do with Reese Nelson. There is no doubt about his ability. He's been very good for us in the patches that he's played. But his injury problems do cause me issues when it comes to building the squad. And is it time to give those youngsters the opportunity and let Reese Nelson maybe move on to a club that has Champions League football? A pretty decent transfer bid coming in for Leo now. Uh, we haven't used him that much. And it's Ajax. So it's Champions League football. He's 75 overall now. But I do think... We should probably negotiate this one. We probably won't get a ton of money. I do like Leo. Again, he's, he's not played that much. I do feel like we're holding him back now a little bit. And I do plan on maybe going big for a left back in this window. Because it is a position that we are a little bit 50-50 on. Let's just see if they'll give me 9.5 million for Leo. And I don't want to stand in the way of him having the opportunity of playing Champions League football. We'll actually accept that. 7.3 million and a 5% sell-on clause. So hopefully if he goes for big money in the future, Blackburn will recoup some of that back. Now the left back I was thinking about as the improvement is Alex Centellas. He is currently playing for Burnley, freshly relegated, only has a year left on his contract. This would be a side like Blackburn taking advantage of a rival as well, by the way, that have gone down a division. He's only been there for six months. It hasn't worked out for him. We're going to go in for a bit. I don't think he's going to cost us that much. I think we'll be able to get him roundabout value. It's an improvement at left back. I really like his attributes. I think he'll just fit the team perfectly. I'm actually going to lowball Burnley and go 15 million because he's not got long left. They're going to be a little bit a little bit harsh here, but it's fine. I understand. They'll want a decent wedge for him because he is, after all, a very good player. Let's say 17.5 million for Centellas. 18.9, that's not a bad deal. Under 20 million for a 79 rated 25-year-old left back that I believe has Champions League experience. I could be completely wrong. But I think he's an upgrade at left back. And then him and Pickering can share that duty. I'm pretty sure he's probably going to want crucial or important. He's an established player. A little bit of experience now in the Premiership with his time at Burnley. Like I said, it was short. He was only there for six months. He came in in the January transfer window. And I think Burnley only won two games after that window. So he'll have experienced a pretty rough time at the back. He's going to want a bit of a pay increase. But we're going to accept it. He'll probably be 80 rated very quickly. So that's quite a big improvement on Pickering. I think that's like four overall improvement on Pickering. I'm pretty sure that we should be getting an A for this one as well. Who knows? There we go. We do get an A for Alex and tell us. And when it comes to improving the midfield and most importantly trying to replace Travis, there are a couple of options here at free transfer we have sebastian gomez who looks like he could be a very good cdm for us and ladislav kreji i look i don't know how you say that name i'm gonna be honest with you he's six foot three though he's just an enforcer but he is injury prone which is worrying me but it's not that much of a risk because he could play center back as well at six foot three he'd actually be very good at center back so we are going to go in for Ladislav. I don't know how I'm ever going to say his last name. There will be resale value on this one. We still need to be making these kind of deals while we're in the league. And that will be Jordan Henderson and Ladislav in the team. I'm pretty sure he's played a fairly high level. I know nothing about him, let's be honest. But he wants crucial, and we're going to give him that. We're going to accept basically any terms that he offers our way. I'm actually okay with that. That's quite a good deal. And he's another upgrade there in midfield because... We are slowly going to have to start making a decision on what we want to do with Jason Knight and Mads Bidstrup. Sa, Jordan Henderson, and now Ladislav, though, will be very good for us. Prejic, I think, may be his last name, but I, I could be wrong. But does it matter? Because it's another A. And luckily, just in time, Sa has finished his development plan and can now be changed to his CDM, where he will remain 77 overall rating. 
But th that to me is massive. I'm going to go anchor man for a little bit more pace and dribbling ability. But I mean, he's already pretty physical. It's going to improve his stamina as well as his weak foot, which is pretty decent for me. And for the first game of the season, then it's going to be the King Power against Leicester City. This is the starting 11 for now. This is going to change a lot as the season goes on. Reese Nelson, not even on the bench today as we try and figure out his future. Cowell will be the starting left mid. The Tellers comes in at left back. It is Colwell and Cannon, as you'd expect. I've given Cannon the captain's armband, but that means nothing. It's great. Grant with Metcher behind him. This is a big opportunity for Metcher because if it doesn't work out for him in the early stages of this season, he will be dropped and we will give the game time to Eskel, Rudd and Alex Scott instead. It's actually Jordan Henderson's first game for Blackbird as well. So I, I'm excited to see how he gets on, boys. Honestly, I'm excited to see how he gets on. Excited to see how we get on this year. We're kicking off with this formation because Leicester play quite open. That should play into how your boy Yorkie likes to play. And uh, let's see what the boys can do today. In terms of these performances, we're going to need big ones this year. I'm going to need Callum Grant really to have a year like he had last year because he was just full of goals. And tell us, that's great play from him. Cowell will keep it. This is opening up now a little bit more nicely than I expected. Callum Grant trying to find that ball across to a mad Diallo. It's not going to be as easy as that against Leicester. They're not a bad side. They finished just outside of the top four last season. So we should expect that they're going to be a difficult opening day fixture i haven't noticed too many changes they've got sadar up top though which is a little bit worrying and of course still james madison here in the squad sadar now gonna whip that one across and turner is always gonna be equal to those kind of balls across slide that one in behind to a mad diallo for the shot oh great save mad diallo really having to pick up the slack this year because andreason hasn't played too much football that's a good ball into grant oh it's just on the post he hasn't played much football as Andreessen, so Mad Diallo is going to have to be a beast. Tell us, what options is he going to have? Is he going to slide that one into Grant? He is, but Grant's clever. Grant is actually very clever. Cowell now. He do. He wants Metcher. It had to be inside. Metcher. Oh, what a beautiful finish. I said he has to perform this season if he's going to be in the starting 11. And that's a very good way to kick off your campaign for Felix Metcher. Great play from Cowell as well, who's stepping in for Reese Nelson today. With the potential transfer, how he squeezes that beyond the keeper, I'll never know. He should be saving it, if we're being honest. I think he just gets confused. I feel like he thinks his defender is going to get there ahead of Metcher. Nonetheless, we're very happy to capitalise on that and to take the lead here. Uh, opening day victory in the Premiership would be massive. This one's a much easier start to our Premiership season because you've got to remember last time out, we took on Liverpool to kick off the Prem. Kevin Birch. Oh, he's played that perfectly into Madison. Oh, there we go. 1-1. One, one. Just like that, instantly. Straight back in the game. I, I got completely done by Graven Birch there. He's not a bad player, is he? Look at this ball. Fooled me completely. I went to block him off. There's nothing I could do once Madison was clean through. Early now into the second half. And they're going to be playing a great ball into Madison with the ball roll. This is lovely. They've kind of got a little bit stuck. We're going to get away with it. Can Felix mention our break? He's going to find Callum Grant. He's going to take a good touch, actually. Callum Grant, then. He's going to use the Mad Diallo, is he? Oh, Mad Diallo's just held off by Montez. Forced Leicester into a very poor clearance here. Metcher out wide. That's Callum Britton. Oh, good save. Let's make a couple more subs now. It's going to be Grant coming off. He's just already got into it today. And I'm going to give opportunity to Billy Bennett. I'm also going to bring on Mads Bidstrup, returning back to the club. See if any of those players can have an impact. I must admit, in terms of up top, I mean, it's a lot of pressure to be putting on Jens Dahl. Players like Billy Bennett as well. Will it pay off? I have no idea. Oh, I thought Jens Dahl was making a run there. I have no idea if this is going to pay off using the youngsters right now. But maybe it will in the future. Ball into a Mad Diallo. Mad Diallo's no slouch. Henderson just couldn't get to it. Held off. In the end, get that one into Mads Bidstrup, who tries to get it into Eskel Rudd. Eskel Rudd still ends up with a football. Good save. Their goalkeeper's been very strong in net today. The whistle's blown. It's going to be a 1-1. It's going to be a point. This is exactly the same result, apart from the scoreline, of course, was a point in the opening day of our Premiership season last year. It's going to be the same this year. And there's still some questions. Do we have the firepower? Do we have the players? It's, it's a different squad this year, and maybe a little bit weaker in some positions, but stronger in others. Jordan Henderson had a good debut, though. Transfer offer coming in from Girona for Metcher after that last game. They must have seen him. It's not a bad offer. It's not a bad fee. 
But who knows? This could be his year, so I don't feel like letting him go there would make sense. So it's going to be the same starting 11 then that takes on Crystal Palace. They drew their opening game of the season. It's a little bit of a different looking squad from when we played them in the cup in the second season. This is our starting 11. We're sticking with Cowell again, but Reese Nelson this time is on the bench. Reggie Cannon, of course, continuing to be the captain until we make that decision down below. But I, I actually think Reggie Cannon captain and Matt Turner vice captain would fit perfectly. But I'd rather leave it to the vote. I'd rather let you guys have the full decision on what we do there. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful ball in behind. It's done some tell us. Now, there's one thing I remember about Crystal Palace very clearly is they have a ton of pace. Does Callum Grant have this? He doesn't. I know he doesn't already. He has a good touch now, but Felix Metcher just couldn't get to him. His run was straight at him, and Callum Grant has gone down holding his knee. That is extremely worrying, considering we are so weak right now at striker. I think we're, without a shadow of a doubt, going to have to sign one now. I think we might have to sign two at this rate if Callum Grant's going to be injured for the long term. So tell us there. Nearly getting away, but Callum Grant being out could be huge. Callum Grant's picked himself back up, though. It doesn't look in too bad shape. Then tell us with the overlap. We're going to use Cowell. Cowell, then, he's going to wait and wait for that little cheeky run of Grant. Grant trying to find a bit of space. He has done. Callum Britton's had a couple of good shots so far this season. He'll force the goalkeeper into a save. Now we're going to keep Callum Grant on for now because it's Jens Dahl on the bench. This could be his season, though. It could be Jens Dahl's season. That is... Not bad from Centellus, but he just couldn't get it out of his feet. Listen now. Just looking to pick out a good pass, and he's going to do that to Callum Grant. Callum Grant can't win the header. Can Henderson win that one? He can. Felix Metcher now into a Mad Diallo. Good touch from him. A Mad Diallo needs to be a big season from him with Tyrese Dolan gone. And he's not started it off badly, finding the back of the net there. In the melee of that goal, though... Jordan Henderson is now injured. This could be two major injuries in one game at the start of the season. It was always going to be an issue. Jordan's is a, a shoulder issue, which is worrying me the most. I'm going to bring him off straight away. I'm going to bring on Alex Scott. It's a good job we've got the reserves there. Callum Grant, for now, will stay on the pitch for a little bit longer. Akare with a shot from distance. It's not good enough to beat us. See if we can work something out now. Santellas has pace, which... Something I'm, I'm noticing straight off the bat. He's got bags of pace, but that pass just wasn't good enough. And it could leave us a little bit wide open here. And it has left us a little bit wide open for his shot. But Turner is equal to it. Go with a big opportunity now. And we're going to go into Callum Grant, but he's injured. So it's not going to work out. But we'll go across to Cowell for 2-0. Oh, he's pulled it beyond the post. That might be one of his weaknesses at the minute, Cowell. His scoring ability... And he's dragged that one just beyond the pose. We try keeping him on, but it's just not working out, is it? A number nine, Callum Grant, injured. He'll come off. Jens Dahl will come on. Big moment again. He's only 18 this season. So, I mean, he's still so, so young. Out to Kakare. Kakare, Reggie Cannon defending brilliantly. Oh, now with the pace to break free, but Jens Dahl isn't going to be an easy target. Jens Dahl! Oh, he's just not tall, is he? But he still manages to get his head on that one. That may be... Should have been 2-0, and we could have rested a little bit. Oh, a lovely ball in behind now. Kakare can't get it across. We don't clear it fully. Raksakai. Oh, well, hell, Turner. This could work out well for me. Felix Mecha scored on the opening day. Felix Mecha can't score on the second game. Jean-Philippe Mateta coming on for Palace. He's caused me problems in the past. We're making a triple substitution. Reese Nelson comes on, and then it's two of the academy boys. So that's going to be a theme of this year, I think. But the academy lads getting opportunities. Oh, that should have been two. Rayleigh should have been two. Andreasen now. Oh, he still wants Esco Rudd. He still might get... Oh, what a ball into uh, Jens Dahl that might have been. That might have been great visions. And tell us. Is it to Colwell? Colwell then into Rudd. Rudd out wide to Andreasen. Pump it across. Can't Rudd with the second. Esco Rudd scoring for Blackburn Rovers. Makes it 2-0. It's great to see Esco Rudd on the score sheet. And there we go. The youngsters combining Rayleigh there. Andreasen causing problems with his run. Do we give the youngsters their chance this season? That's going to be the biggest question that you guys need to answer down below. Matt Turner is ecstatic about this. What a ball in from Rudd to start off with. He's such a good passer and a good finish there. Rayleigh been working on his finishing. Hopefully this season at camp, he'll be able to add a little bit more 
up top. What's well, the last action of the game as well from Esco Rudd? But that will be our first three points of the season in the second game of the season. And we're going to have to see what these injuries say now, though. That is the big thing to find out from this game. It was a good performance all round, though. And defensively, I was really impressed there. We defended very well. Santellas had some big moments. Britain as well. I think the back line... Instantly now is better. Injury-wise, though, let's see. Five days for Carlum Grant. That is huge. It will only be five for Jordan Henderson as well. Fantastic news. I still think we definitely need some strikers, though. There are several options going for all positions, but up top right now, we're going to go through who potentially we could bring in. But Dane Scala at PSG, probably not getting much game time. I, I don't think Colo Muani we could get. Troy Parrott, for me, is probably not good enough anymore. Ivan Tony. Premier League experience. Could still get him from Augsburg. I found Tommy Edwards, 19-year-old, playing for Sturm Graz. He, I mean, he could be unbelievable. Again, he'd be very young, so I'd prefer someone maybe more like Ivan Tony. We're going to play a 4-4-2. Nonto has just gone already to Udinese. Lucy Dembele is not a bad shout, but I think he'd be getting too much game time at Leon, We've got Awani, who could be an option, but Dennis has been sold, so I'm guessing he's their main striker now. Ronaldo Becker is good. Balogun we could still go back for. Wouldn't be a ridiculous deal and you guys really like the idea of Balogun so let me know. I've put Reese on this because he had an okay season for Preston last time out. They did get relegated but he did score goals and in a 4-4-2 a two-man partnership up top his height and ability would probably be very good. I've also added Odson Edward because they got relegated as well did Burnley and someone like Edward should probably not be playing in the championship. He would be pretty expensive but nowhere near as expensive as he should be if they were in a better league. Now a player I really liked the look of was Luis Vasquez. He looks extremely good at 24. The Argentinian big issue he's just signed for Valerica no, we were looking at him and we just haven't got there in time, which is a major shame. There's also Esposito, but let me know down below what you think when it comes to striker, what we should do. Also, this is your opportunity to get your feedback in on just what we should do with the squad in general. Does Reese Nelson go? There are some big questions. Of course, Tyrese Dolan went, but Amad Diallo scored in that last game and Andreasen looks pretty good when he comes on. Do we still need a right midfielder? There are just so many questions that need asking and answering in the next episode. If you want a much faster paced career mode, of course, watch Athletic coming. Madrid, we take it a little bit slower here with the Blackburn one. I think we will probably have a series now every year on the channel where it's just a slower series. This is like an old school CM you used to watch. And that's what I kind of want this series to be, where we actually talk through a lot of the stuff that's going on. I don't just cut most of it out. I'm going to show you a lot of it and, and much more highlights than I would say if we were doing a quicker series and a quicker turnaround like Atletico. I appreciate you all. I hope you're all staying safe. Smash the subscribe button if you're new and I will see you for the next episode where I can't wait to find out what more craziness can go on in this transfer window.